What is going on, you magnificent fucks? Welcome back to another video. Uh, today we're doing Watain. We are ranking all of Watain's studio albums, all seven of them, from 2000 to 2020. Uh, this was suggested in a poll. I think 45% of you chose this one, and then 18 chose the other three. If I did my math right there, not sure. But pretty sure that's what the poll said. Either way. Today, we're here, and we are doing Watain's studio albums. Uh, Watain is a band that I don't know jack shit about. I don't remember which country they're from. I don't remember when they were formed. And I don't know jack shit about their members. Yeah. <laughs> now that we've got that out of the way... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and dive right into this. This is going to be an edited video, by the way. Um, first off, I know a lot of hardcore black metal fans are going to be kind of upset by this, but Rabid Death's Curse 2000, that comes in number seven for me. And let me explain why. So this album came out right at the turn of the century, and, you know, the 90s theme of black metal just having murky production and sounding like shit and everyone loving that had already come to an end by like 97 98 for most metal bands um and the listeners of black metal new material coming out like that wasn't very popular uh or if it was it was a little bit less good than stuff that came out 91 92 93 and definitely 94 and 95 um, I always talk highly of many, many black metal albums that came out in 1994, but, uh, Rapid Death's Curse came out in 2000, and to have that shitty production, and that's very rough on the ears, and songs that are, like, halfway decent, but not very memorable, at 2000, kind of just seems kind of tryhard and pointless, and, uh, trying to do something that has already been done by many others, and they kind of just showed up a little late to the party. All right, coming in at number six, I am going to have to pause to review some notes on some of these clips to before I go into the next one, so this is going to be one of those where I don't really have to pause. Uh, coming in at number six is The Wild Hunt. Now, let me just state that this is probably one of my favorite album covers by the band. Uh, it's definitely my second favorite album cover. But um, there just wasn't much here for me in this album. To me, uh, wait, when did this come out? 2013? To me, I felt like Watain was trying to branch out a little too much, especially following such a great album like Lawless Darkness. Uh, I feel like the band was trying to branch out a little too much and experiment with a lot of things that they didn't really know how to do. And they did them, but it wasn't really a direction that people wanted to see them go down. Uh, yeah, I don't know. To me, it just wasn't as good as some of the other ones. But it just wasn't their typical sound, basically. Which is, you know, kind of a shitty thing to say, because, you know, this is Watain. But it just didn't seem so much like, you know, the discography that most of us are used to. And I appreciate this album for what it is. It's not a bad album by any means. Um... The only bad album I think they have is their debut. But anyways, that's kind of how I feel about The Wild Hunt. Let me pause and review my notes for a second, and I'll get on to number five. All right, so coming in at number five for me is Cassus Luciferi. Uh, this is their 2003 album, their second studio album. And for me, this one isn't too special. I mean, it is a good album in its rights. It's definitely an improvement over the last one, and that's what I respect this album for. But what I also respect about this album is that Watain did not uh, veer too far into the crisp side of things. Coming out with a thing like Rabid Death's Curse, um, and then following it up with Casas Luciferi, a lot of bands will produce something like Rabid Death's Curse, and then put out something as good as Sworn to the Dark or Lawless Darkness or something like that right after. And people who are fans of the previous album do not like the new direction that they're taking 
due to the fact of it being so very fucking clean. Now, uh, this album as a whole, yes, it sounds better than Rabbit Death's Curse, but the reason I have this one down at number five is because it's somewhat forgettable. Yes, it's a great step, definitely in the right direction towards the high point, or one of the main high points of their discography. It is definitely a step up. But this album is very forgettable uh, compared to the rest of their discography. Cassis Luciferi is very consistent all the way through, but the thing about the consistency is it's just not very memorable. There are not very many songs in this album that stand out too much to me, ones that I would put key points on, maybe other than the last two tracks. Uh, the bells are definitely creepy, and I like that about this album, but other than that, there's just not too much there for me, and I don't know if I'd give this one another listen. So, that's my number five, Cassus Luciferi. Uh, I don't think I need an edited clip here. Yeah, actually, you know what? I'm going to review my notes on this one, too. Number four. All right, so coming in at number four, now these next four are going to be the ones that I would definitely have in my catalog that I would have on that giant ass shelf of CDs back there. Um, these are definitely four albums that I would add to my collection any day. Coming in at number four, I've got to go with Trident Wolf Eclipse of 2018. So there was a five year gap between The Wild Hunt and Trident Wolf Eclipse. And to me, I think that gap was completely worth it. Granted, I wasn't a Watain fan at the time, and I can't exactly say that I was there for the wait. Uh, I wasn't even a metal fan back in those days. So, uh, again, that's kind of maybe a little iffy for me to say, but uh, I definitely think that it would be worth it because Trident Wolf Eclipse is kind of their redirect from their um, experimental phase. Now, I gotta, I gotta say, it's probably difficult for some people, or like for some bands, because a lot of people are like, oh, it's just the same old black metal shit, but when you go experimental, like the main black metal fans are gonna be like, what the fuck is happening to this group? So, I mean, I guess it's kind of difficult, and I understand why they would come out with something like The Wild Hunt, but for most of us black metal fans, Trident Wolf Eclipse was kind of a redirect and a nice refocus on what the band was truly going for with their sound. Not to mention the band was going through, I think, a close friend's suicide. That's one thing I did read on um, a little newsletter somewhere when I first started listening to this band about a week ago. So that's the one thing I do know about the band. But uh, that definitely had an influence on this album as it was just incredibly intense and really good all the way through. And uh, it's sad to say that the deaths of loved ones can influence an album, but they really can in a positive way and a negative way. Uh, some of the songwriting can reflect the depression and the hardships that the band is going through. Um, and the lyrics, they can just be so fucking dark, you know, due to heresy and just the pure depression that it brings losing someone that close to you. So that's kind of how I feel about Trident Wolf Eclipse. Um, I think it's an incredible album. The album art is definitely great. And throughout, it's just a good album. So uh, let's move on to number three, which is Lawless Darkness. So for this one, I do not really need a uh, review in my notes sheet. Lawless Darkness came out in 2010, and it is my third album because I think it is absolutely insane. Um, it is great. It's basically a little bit of a, it's very slightly, extremely slightly less good than Sworn to the Dark. Um, it's pretty much the exact same tone. It's like they just continued on with that style of music and made their next album. The only thing I really don't like about this album is the length of it. Other than that, I think that this album is almost perfect. I, this one comes in at like, I think a minute or pff, a minute. Yeah, a minute long album, guys. Wow, that's shorter than every EP. <laughs> no, uh, this one comes in at an hour and I think 19 minutes. For me, this album was only a struggle to listen to for that reason. Um, but in a way, this one still seems shorter than The Wild Hunt because, well, it was better. But I think The Wild Hunt was one of their shortest albums. 
and it just seemed so much longer because of, you know, how bad I thought it was. Rabbit Death's Curse, I almost just couldn't even get through, but yeah, tis what it is. Uh, yeah, it's kind of how I feel about Lawless Darkness. Kick-ass album cover. Great album. All right, um, this is where it gets very difficult for me, one and two. I sat here and pondered for about 15 minutes just looking at the albums, remembering what was in these albums, and uh, trying to rank them, and I could not come to a decision. So I just had to put one in second place and first place. So I'm going to put second and first place here. To be honest, I really don't... If I truthfully had to pick... I would put the Agony and Ecstasy of Watain in second. And the reason being, there is, uh, I'll get to my reason when I talk about number one. So the Agony and Ecstasy of Watain literally came out, I was going to say this year, but it's 2023 now. Holy shit, I'm getting old. Happy New Year's, guys. Um, today is what? Early morning of the 2nd of January? <laughs> it's January 2023. I'm going to be 19 this year. Holy fuck. So, yeah. Uh, the Agony and Ecstasy of Wutain. Great album to come out in 2022. Um, especially after the rebuild with Trident Wolf Eclipse. And then following it up with something like this. Whew, really fucking good. And for a band to come out... A, a band, you know, like a black metal band... Um, such as Watain, to come out with something this good, this late in their career, is pretty impressive. Because a lot of people start with, a lot of people put some of the band's first albums in first place. And that's what most metal fans do, because a lot of early metal sound is better than the newer metal sound. But here, I have Rabid Death's Curse in last, and The Agony and Ecstasy of Watain almost in first. They really got their sound back from what I have in first place, Sworn to the Dark. For me, as mur not murky, as creepy and spooky as The Agony of Ecstasy of Watain is, it's their spookiest album for me. Sworn to the Dark has such an eerie feeling to it that really brings this genre full circle, like full center, full circle, however you want to say it, because those dual guitars in this style of music is so good. And 2007, there's quite a few albums that came out in 2007 that I'm a huge fan of, uh, but this one is definitely high on that list. Sworn to the Dark, that album cover the fucking change in sound from Rabid Death's Curse and Cassus Luciferi. This is really one of the high points of their career. Uh, definitely, definitely the main high point that I would uh, talk about for a new Watain fan to come in and ask me questions about this band. That's where I stand on this. I think that by 2007, they really had that sound in play, and that's where most people were the fans of this album. So that's where I stand on their discography. If you guys disagree with me, great. Don't be an asshole about it. Leave your comment. I'd love to see your ranked list. I know mine might be a little different than some folks, but that's kind of where I stand on the topic. So uh, just let me know what your guys' list is, and I would love to see your guys' opinions vary. I always love looking at how people view it, bands differently than me. Uh, I think it's definitely like a great thing that we can do here on YouTube, and that's why I started this channel. So uh, let me know how you feel about Watain. Let me know if you're even not a fan of Watain and you're just here to watch this video to see if, uh, for whatever reason. So, yeah. With that, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. I don't know if I touched on this at the beginning of the video, but yes, my eyelid is swollen. I'm sure you were looking at it this whole video. Um, but yeah. Until then, rock on, peace out, and fuck off. It is... 3.15 in the morning. I'm going to go to bed, or at least attempt to. I slept all day, guys, so I'm going to try to go to bed. But first, I'm going to upload this video, so I will see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.